Hello everyone, welcome to this session. Uh, this is our new topic, forces in equilibrium. So we'll start with the moment of force. So this is a new topic in the, uh, physics. So we'll start with the moment of force, but before discussing that, let's see the effect of turning force. Now we'll get into introduction of force that yes, a force is a push or pull which when applied to a body, it will change its state either by stopping it if it was in motion or making it move if it was at least. So a force is just a push or pull experienced by a body. Now, if a body and uh, action of a net external force is uh, allowed to rotate uh, about a pivot, the body will tend to turn in the direction of the applied force. So this is illustration of uh, this statement here that if the body uh, under the action of uh, a net external force. So take an ex take an example. There is a body here. So and the force is applied to this kind of a body. Now, if this body that is under a net external force is allowed to rotate uh, about a pivot. This is our pivot. Now the body which is here will tend to turn in the direction of the applied force. So if the turning force is in this way, so the body will just come in direction to the applied force that is also in this way. So that's kind of an effect of a turning force. It draws the body to the direction of the applied force. So from there, you can just understand the effect uh, of the turning force uh, upon a body. Now let's see examples of turning effect uh, of force now take an example, a person pushing a swing uh, will make the swing rotate about its pivot. So that's the first example. Another one, a worker applies force to a spanner to rotate a nut. So that's another example of turning effect of a force. Also another one, a person removes a, a bottle's cork by pushing down the bottle openers level. Uh, also, forces are applied to a door knob uh, and the door swings open after about its height. So, all these are just examples of turning effect of force and how we can see and the, how they can be applied in our daily life. Also, a driver can turn a steering wheel by applying force on its rim. So, I hope it's clear on how these examples can be as examples of the turning effect effect of force now let's move on to the moment of force this is our main uh, topic which are discussing in this video now a moment of force about a point is just the turning effect of force about that point so that's why we started with the effect of force on turning body so a moment of force about a point is just the turning effect of force upon at uh, that point. Now it is obtained as the product of the applied force and the perpendicular distance from the point of the application of the force. So you get the moment of force that is the uh, the turning effect of force about a given point by taking the applied uh, by taking the applied force and the perpendicular distance uh, from the point of the application of the force. Now therefore Moment of force depends mainly on the two factors uh, from the above statement, namely the applied force, that is the force that is applied toward or uh, upon the uh, direction or, or given body. And the second one is the perpendicular distance uh, from the point of action of the force to the turning point, that is the fulcrum. Now from there, the change uh, of state of a body can appear in several forms, and the most common form is the turning effect, which is referred to as a moment of force. Now, the unit of moment of force is a Newton meter. Now, mathematically, you can express the moment of force by saying that moment of force equals to force per pen times the perpendicular distance, uh, abbreviated as m equals to F times D, that is force times perpendicular distance. Now let's see the various types of moments 
Now, the turning effect can bring about the two kinds of moments, which are clockwise moment and anti-clockwise moment. The clockwise moment is just caused by the forces which tend to turn the body in a clockwise direction. While the anti-clockwise moment uh, is the one that is caused by the forces which tend to turn the body in an anti-clockwise moment. So there you have it. Those are the two kinds of the moments. The clockwise moment uh, resulted by the forces tend to turn the body in clockwise direction. And the anti-clockwise moment that is caused by the forces that tend to turn the body, the body in the anti-clockwise direction. Now consider the diagram below. So here is kind of a level, and here there is a fulcrum. Then there's uh there's this side that is uh the W1 side and there's W2 side, whereby in W2 side there's also WO. Now from here, the fulcrum just separates the two sides. So we'll discuss this uh, clearly by the following statements or just following uh, notes upon this diagram. So the above uniform load AB, so this is our load AB, is balanced about the turning point that is the Farcom F. As you can see here, uh, this is our Farcom F that balances uh, this load AB. Now, the weight W1 acting on point A tends to turn the load in the anticlockwise direction. So the weight W1 uh, tends to turn this one, this side, I mean the point A, which is this side uh, in the anticlockwise direction. Uh, while the weight two acting on point B, weight two is here acting on point B, this one. Uh, and the weight uh, of the rigid body WO, that is this one, WO, will tend to move the load in the clockwise direction. So this one will be going anti-clockwise direction, that this means this way, like this side, while the, the other one, which are from this side, will tend to move in the clockwise direction, like this way, as the clockwise direction. So hence we have two anticlockwise moments due to the weight W2 and the weight of the uh, of the load WO. Now, therefore, as the anticlockwise moment will be equal to the weight W1 multiply its distance from the fulcrum, uh, and the, the anticlockwise moment will be W1 times C uh, the distance from the fulcrum that is D1. And the sum of the clockwise moment also will be equal to clockwise moment due to W2 plus clockwise moment due to WO. So you, you take the, the way to multiply by, by the distance. So the sum of clockwise moment, you just have to take the clockwise moments due to W2 that you get it by taking the weight to multiply by distance two and the clockwise clockwise moment due to WO by taking WO multiplied by distance three. Clearly, this is how it is W1 multiplied by D1, then it, this will be the anti-clockwise moment, will be equal to the clockwise moment that is WO multiplied by this W3, uh, I mean D3 plus W2 multiplied by the D2. This will be the clockwise moment. So anti-clockwise moment equals to clockwise moment, which is the principle of moments, which we are going to discuss it in our later videos. So I hope it's clear. So thank you guys for listening. So far, we've started uh, the introduction to this topic, forces in equilibrium. We've seen the uh, the the force acting on the substances, uh, just the effect of turning force. Uh, on given points, then we have later on seen the moment of force, the two kinds of moments, which are clockwise and the anticlockwise, and we've seen their mathematical uh, presentations. Thank you. I hope it's clear. In our next video, we'll move on to the principle of moments. Thank you.